some of our pre-existing conditions through high-risk tools or other mechanisms. Uh, I think we have a lot of work to do in that area. The reality is I have an older sister who has breast cancer. Um, she, uh, for years, uh, believed she was in, and she was to a certain degree, in job lock. Now, lots of people think she couldn't have changed any jobs. Most of you are sophisticated. You know she could have left a major employer and gone to another major employer. But if she'd gone out into a consulting field and had to buy a policy in the individual market, uh, after having had breast cancer, she could well have faced a problem of pre-existing conditions. And yet, uh, if we create the right kind of high-risk pools in all 50 states, or for that matter, any state that doesn't want to join uh, or create its own high-risk pool, uh, allow the people of that state to join a federal high-risk pool, we can take care of the problem of those that have high-risk conditions and can't get costs at a reasonable price. There's a lot that we can do. Uh, I do want to leave uh, time for questions and answers, but I want to say, on the topic of time, we have to begin now. The reality is even Republican members of Congress don't yet fully understand that the problems we face in healthcare today in the pre-Obamacare structure are simply problems that can be solved if we created a bona fide marketplace and gave people choice. Imagine if you let people buy a policy that met their needs and let them hold that policy accountable if it cheated them. Let me just conclude with this story. How many of you watched any television last night? Okay, in say two or three hours of television, how many of you would have seen an, a commercial for at least one or two or three auto insurance companies? How many of you saw a commercial, not for Medicare insurance, saw a, a commercial for health insurance for people not in the Medicare bracket? The answer is none of you. And you know why? Because they don't have to compete for our business. And until we create a dynamic where the health insurance companies in America can use their genius and their knowledge to create a better product, driving costs down and quality up, we will not have solved health care reform in America. I thank you and uh, happy to answer your questions. American Enterprise Institute. Uh, in your last sentence, you talked about insurance competition, where they would get the price down and the quality up. That's what's been bugging me all day since the first session, because some people raised the issue that there would be a race to the bottom, and that this uh, notion of competition just means price competition, and you would have these quality problems. I've been wanting to say all day, to, to the people in the state legislatures and so on, don't let somebody make that argument to you. Because everything I know about economic competition is they put a lot of emphasis on value. And that means not just giving people choices about the price, but also the quality. The other thing that gets left out of this argument is the role of the consumer. The assumption that this is going to be a race to the bottom just leaves the consumer uh, out of the picture and assumes that they are too stupid to ever make the right choice. So I'd like your reaction, please. You bet. Um, well, I agree with both of your criticisms. Uh, the reality is the left often uh, believes or argues or fundamentally uh, bases its policies on the belief that people are too stupid to make decisions in their own lives. Um, I kind of began the healthcare debate uh, with an idea that we would pass a law telling every employer in America that once a year when they open their open enrollment panel or, or period where people could pick from amongst the plans they offered them, they would have to say, you can actually go also buy a plan of your choosing outside of our company plan. Uh, um, I argued to them that that would do two things. One, most people who looked outside would find out what a great deal they were getting with the plan they had, and they'd quit complaining about it, uh, and they'd recognize that it was not in fact free and that they were spending some of their own money in reality on that plan, but if they uh, 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 did find one on the outside, uh, all the better. Uh, the HR managers, now this is almost 20 years ago, said, oh, Congressman, we can't possibly do that. These people aren't near bright enough to buy their own health insurance. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Uh, the reality is in every other marketplace, Americans shop not just for price, but also for quality. We do it in cars, we do it in clothes, we do it in everything we buy every day. Uh, in my state, you can go to the high-end grocery store, the middle grocery store, or the bottom grocery store. And you can make choices uh, that span both quality and cost. And the American people have proven it works. But more importantly, nobody in the world has proven there's something 
better way to do it. Government bureaucrats can't get it right. I'll give you just one example. It seems to me the latest example is that our government bureaucracy took all of our uh, uh, confidential uh, cables about uh, international relations with various countries, put them in one site, and failed to secure that site. And apparently there were 500,000 access portals, and we now know that uh, the world is watching what various uh, heads of state have been saying to each other. If big government meant good government, uh, that might be one thing, but it doesn't solve the problem. And choice will make a difference, uh, and there will not just be, there will not be a race to the bottom. There will be, uh, there are studies that show, by the way, that if you allowed interstate competition, that alone would reduce the number of uninsured Americans by, I think it's 17 million, million people without a dime in additional cost because it would simply force that level of competition. So um, I, I think the American people are smart enough to make those decisions about auto insurance and about every other complicated aspect of their lives. One more question. I will take the prerogative of asking the final question. What is your most optimistic but still realistic um, expectation? of what might be possible in this Congress regarding, regarding Obamacare. In this Congress? In this Congress. Oh, I think this Congress has a huge opportunity to first, well, first symbolically put up a repeal vote uh, and maybe do that several times. But more importantly, to move beyond that and to begin to expose the things that the people in this room know about the gigantic flaws in the legislation. Um, I understand Dr. Burgess talked about it earlier, but it, it, in Russia, we understood that if you knew someone powerful, you could get a better deal. Now it looks like in healthcare in America already, if you're a McDonald's or you're a big employer like Caterpillar, you can go get a special carve out. But what about me? You know, I got a little consulting business, not yet, but someday, um, uh, and, and I want to get a, a carve out. No chance for that. Uh, there are lots and lots of pieces, the obvious one being the 1099, but we should strategically pick the big flaws in the bill, start with the most flagrant that everybody knows about, and then use the attack on those flaws to educate people. And here, I would say to my colleagues in the House, since we're going to have a solid majority in the House, don't worry about whether the Senate can pass it. Don't worry about whether the President uh, would veto it. Use the debate, pass the bill to educate people about the fact that this thing is simply not financially sustainable. And, 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 and use it also to point out that it will not give them choice. It will not drive down cost. I mean, we were promised cost. It, we were promised it would bring down the cost of premiums. It would bring down the cost of the government. And we were promised that if you have a plan you like, you can keep it. Not a one of those is true. So use the debate to do those things. And then, quite frankly, I think if you did enough incremental damage to it on that, on that process, even not enacting any of those repeal, repeal of a particular provision, then I think you present the president toward the end of this Congress with measures that delay its implementation until uh, he can come up with solutions to the problems. And I think it'll be hard put to say, no, no, I want to go forward with this schedule. So I think um, attack the flaws and then try to delay its implementation on, finan on financial grounds. We simply cannot afford it. Uh, we could afford it if it would solve the problems, but it leaves millions still uninsured and it doesn't bring down costs and it doesn't give you a choice and you can't keep the plan you have. The real challenge is education. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Congressman Shattuck. It's My just pleasure. been a pleasure. You've been, we really look forward to your continued leadership. Thank you.